Collins meeting to order. Please rise for the pledge of allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. So where 
they now have, say, 120 hours, they used to have 180. That is the major portion of what the police unit has conceded in this contract, to give back all this, this time. Um, if you go to Article 3, the change under Section 1 outlines who, who this affects. So basically, employees hired after March, uh, annual, vac annual vacation is based for new employees hired after March 2003. This was put in here to protect the more senior officers that have been here for many years. Um, it really only affects a couple of the younger officers. That they, they can only accrue up to 20 vacation days. The previous contract allowed for up to 30 vacation days. So the new contract follows civil service, right. which allows uh, 20 days. However, the contract does exclude any officer that already has say 25 days or 26 days. If they've accrued it at, that, at this point, we're not taking anything away from anybody who's, who's approved. But basically, anyone who's above that 20-day 20, 20 mark is frozen at what they have. How many officers are over the 20-day mark? Probably about uh, all but four, I think, are above that 20-day mark. The two younger officers and two mid-level officers, I think, just at the 20 days. Most of the, most of the officers are above the 20 days. They're mostly at the 25. Um, so what you're looking at, what you guys aren't seeing, is this is my, my copy, just to see the difference. The red lines are all the changes in, in the text. You guys have the actual approval from the union. So, for example, it, it clarifies the eight hours, it clarifies 96 hours. The big part of the contract that's been changed is, is bringing everything from 12-hour days down to eight-hour days. Mm -hmm. And then basically saying that um, uh, they can only crew up to 20, 20 uh, days based on the civil service rule. Uh, any new hires. The other major change that's on this section is, is the fact that uh, under section, Article 3, Section 2, uh, if you recall, one of the things we've done is we've, we've created a borough administrator several years ago, and we also gave him the uh, ability to be the appropriate authority of the police department. So obviously, Mr. Wright is here full time, our chief of police is here full time. That article basically gives the discretion of the chief of police and the borough administrator, as opposed to the, the director of public safety. The reason that I don't want to the director is obviously this, if you read it, it's about a vacation day. This is a payroll issue. This is a management issue. This is not a overseeing of us. If the chief of police and the administrator agree that that vacation day is legitimate. Uh, well, I will say, though, that uh, whenever our chief takes off, he always lets me know. And, and I agree, but he doesn't tell you every officer that's off that day. No, 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 no. Yeah. He just says, I'm going to be off. Yeah, and I think that's appropriate. Yeah. So if we go to. Um, so that's a major change on the vacation. And then the big change is under Article 4 holidays. Uh, this was the, what the union had proposed to, to, uh, to fix a problem that we were having. The amount of time off that the officers were accruing, they, they literally could not use it all. And it was, it was, it was uh, too much. They couldn't take the days off. Some could, some couldn't, and there was a problem. The suggestion that was brought to us was that their holidays and their two personal days value of those days to be rolled into their base pack. And the logic here is, is that originally they were getting 13 holidays plus two personal days is 15. 15 times 12 hours were 180 hours they, they had to use. So the proposal that, if you recall, we originally gave was we offered 120 hours to buy that. To buy those, that 180, we were offering 120 at their current salary for each individual. So if an officer was making $10 an hour, we were offering, offering 10 times 120, and so forth for whatever everyone's salary was. Um, during the negotiations, there was, a, there was a part of the, the existing contract, if you look under Section 3, it allowed the employees to sell back 30 hours at the end of the year. This has been done for decades, that they were able to sell back 30 hours. During negotiation, it made sense to just roll that 30 hours in, because they were all keeping it anyway. They, they weren't utilizing it. That 30 hours. So we rolled the 30 in there. So now what you have is effect, on section four is a new section, effective January 1st, 2015. Section one, two, three will no longer will no will have no further force or effect and are replaced by the following. Effective January 1st, 2015. Compensation for the 15 foregoing holidays, inclusive of the two personal holidays, shall be rolled into base A. Compensation, base bank. Compensation for the 15 eliminated holidays will be calculated at 150 hours times the officer's base hourly rate. There, will be, there shall be no additional or separate compensation for holidays or holiday pay after January 1st, 2015. 
it seemed very important to leave this whole page in here because if some future council comes along and says, why are we giving these guys holidays, there's a reason why the holidays are taken out was, was to, to roll it in. And what this does is this adds, not, not only does the vacation time uh, is reduced, and now more officers will be working, this increases the officers working by another 180 possible hours per officer times every officer we have. So that means more officers uh, work. And then if you go to much further on, let's see. Article 9, sick and injured leave. It's just a clarification again that the hours are based on eight hour days. The original was, uh, well actually this was changed in the previous contract, but now it's, it's clarified that it's eight hours with a maximum of 120 hours that they can accrue or use during the year. One thing everybody has to remember about sick leave is it does not expire. So an employee can, an officer can, even in all the other departments, can accrue sick time forever. And if they ever did get sick, they could utilize this. Is that a civil service? That's a civil service work. We were, this was imposed upon us when we became civil service in uh, 2009. Section three, um, the major change there is uh, all the other departments, all the other unions have agreed that since their sick, line, sick time does not expire. Um, the borough has a current policy of what's called major illness, meaning that if an employee is sick, he doesn't have to use a sick time, he doesn't have to use a vacation day, he doesn't have to use disability insurance, he can just go out and the borough will continue to pay him if he's sick and cannot do his job. Um, what's that? Is that not here? Uh, it's on a different track. Yeah, it's a different track. Different track. Well, getting back, I'll get to that later. It's, it's interrelated. It's interrelated, but it's on a different time. So this just clarifies that it's based on eight hours. Right. It's on the next page. Okay. So section 10, yeah. Um, once again, we uh, at section 6, where it said, it used to say borough clerk, it says borough administrator. For some reason, the previous contract said that the borough clerk had to be notified of the sick day. Is that, is that happening? <clears throat> okay. So now, if someone goes out, at the, for an employee to obtain the department, the, Chairman, Director of Public Safety Approval for Paid Sick Leave, the written request must be filed with Borough Administrator. It said Borough Clerk in the, in the old one. So we cleaned a few things up. Um, section 8 also just says Borough Administrator. Before, it was very convoluted, talking about you know, uh, different department heads. Section 10, once again, says just the Administrator, the Chief of Police. Um, and then the last line in Section 10 says Employees Seeking Major Illness Benefits must first use all accrued sick leave until the balance of the accrual does not exceed 40 hours. Uh, Len can attest that all the other three contracts have that exact same word. Yeah, I just have a problem with the first sentence in that section. In the event of major illness, the time used will not be charged against sick leave. Well, it's... That's why I have a problem. Well, because... But it says that, it says that they can go down to 40. It's a little... I just think you're asking for trouble leaving that in there because there's, like, there's going to be an argument. It's, 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 it's ambiguous. Now, I could read this, depends on who you want me to read it. If I read it for us, I will say that if the chief and the borough administrator agree that it's not going to be charged, I don't know what possible circumstances we would ever have to do that, then it won't be charged. Otherwise, it's going to be charged. I think you're safe for taking it. They've already approved it. We're a little late on that. I appreciate it. and. and you know, uh, you know, you're right. Different eyes are seeing different things. This, uh, well, maybe when you're done, because you're not going to, you're not going to not do this for one sentence. For one sentence, you could do a, a sidebar. Yeah, to just make a clarify a clarification. Are you understanding that a little bit? That there's a contradiction in that paragraph. Yeah, um, personal. I mean, I think we've all agreed. Well, that's what we need to clean it up a little too. Okay, the intent was to allow 40 hours. Right. Um, we heard that one thing that you say, as soon as he pointed out, we say. Yeah, there's a contradiction in there. Okay. <clears throat> Whatever we got to do, we'll do it. Clean it up. Okay. Yeah. What defines is defined by a, an officer not being able to do his, it says in section eight. Mm -hmm. For three days. Oh no, seven days? Yeah. Seven days. It says it in the next sentence. Section 10. 
Section 10, the de definition of major illness is an illness deemed by, the, by a doctor as to hinder your capacity to perform the duties of a police officer for more than seven days. Good question. Officers out playing basketball, sledding, and it's hurt. It's a major illness. Yes, and that was a previous problem. And what this does is, it's as close as we could get to getting rid of major illness. What that officer would do is, he would be out, say, for three months because he broke his leg or something like that. He could use his sick time. He could also use his disability insurance. Because if somebody gets injured, we do pay for disability insurance. And if you read the, the there's another line in here. If you look at section 11, the borough will continue to pay the employee's salary during his or her major illness. The employee will turn over to the borough any amount received from state disability. So if someone goes out and they're getting 75% of their pay reimbursed, we get that amount. But it's, yeah, once again, we're, we're, we're dealing with something that's been in there for 25 years. And uh, this, is a, this is really changing things off, and it's matching the other unions. Um, so under Section 11, same thing. It says, subject to the obligation to use the accrued sick leave. That's a new sentence that was put in there. Our, our point is, they used to not be able to keep their sick leave. Now that they can keep it, we're saying we want them to, you know, they get, they get sick, use it up. That's what it's there for. It's not there to bang it. But just to make it clear, the borough has no mechanism to pay for sick leave. So when an employee retires or leaves the borough, they can't cash in their sick days. Now the state of New Jersey allows them. What's that? Well, that's a separate issue. We're trying to clarify that too. But the state of New Jersey limits sick leave payouts at fifteen thousand dollars. But we're not subject to that rule. So Mrs. Powell is not subject to that state law currently. So the state says they you're allowed to have these sick days. They never expire. When you go to retire, you can cash them in up to fifteen thousand. Some municipalities pay 50 cents on the dollar, they do different things to try to, you know, keep people from using up their sick time. Um, this is not bad. This is not bad. Your, your point about using sick time as if someone's getting to retire, that becomes a management issue. You know, we're, we're relying on the chief of police, we're relying on the superintendent of public works to, you know, uh, there are managers that are going to be watching over this time. We have had some abuse on sick time. We just have to be more vigilant on it. Can't, you know, it used to be called terminal leave, where a guy would say, I'm retiring in six months, correct? Since the land, I'm retiring in six months, I have six months worth of sick leave, I'm just going to go home and I'm sick for six months. It doesn't exist in the borough of And it doesn't, ex it, it exists somewhat in the, in the municipalities throughout the state, but not as much. What's that? It just happened. It just happened. Do you want to focus on the, the, the contract, Joyce? Please. Yeah, that was me. Please. Yeah, that was me. It just happened. Let's not pretend like it didn't just happen. Okay, that point. Section 8 new? Section 8 is not new. Section 8 on, on, on right here. The medical certificate. Yeah. Every employee applying for sick leave, is that what you're reading here? Yeah. Uh, it's not new. The only, thing, the only thing it has changed is once again, it, it gives the chief of police and the administrator as opposed to what it used to say was. Chief of Police, through the department chairman, public safety director, such chairman shall indicate to the chief whether sick leave shall be granted. So imagine, Eleanor, every time someone got sick, Paul's supposed to call you. It's never happened anyway. Well, this requires a medical certificate. Right. Yes. Uh, and that's, that's a mechanism that we could use. Yes. Typically, that's never been a problem. I don't know if anybody realizes that getting a doctor's note is not that. Um, and that's what your point is about that individual who was using sick leave. They went to the doctor and got a note. Now, did the borough want to challenge that? I was part of the decision process on that, and it, it wasn't worth it. The individual was retiring in, in, in 60 days, and by the time he challenged it, went to court. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm, just making, I'm just saying, it has happened. I, I agree. If we have this mechanism in place, we should enforce this mechanism. That's my point. The key is management. You know, the man, well, the problem is that person was manager, and he was improving himself to be to be out. So that was a problem. Um, we can move on. Section twelve. It says. Uh, no, no. Section twelve is the same line. Oh, sorry. It just makes it clear that leaves of absence with pay may not exceed one year. There's a state statute that basically says that. If everyone who's been on council recently has realized we've had a few employees go out. We have to limit it to 12, 12 months. I mean, we're literally paying someone. You know, they're probably legitimately injured, but you know, we're paying, and we have to have it. There has to be an end date. Correct, Len? You remember this issue? Yeah. You just need a date from 
the time someone leaves, that, you know, if they're, if they're not going to come back to work, it has to be limited to a year. And the state allows us up to one year. Um, the only change on Article 10 under uniforms, the officers felt that. It would start from the time the person leaves. Yeah, so from the someone goes out, say, that's day one, okay. and then 30, 365 days. Under uniforms, there were, there were two things that were important. In the contract, we changed the word July to September. You see the word September in there. The officers are given $750 to pay for the uniforms. The borough pays for the uniforms. The borough owns the uniforms. Um, they need to be able to have summer clothes, winter clothes, spring clothes. So by letting them turn their receipts in by September, that gives them time to purchase the clothes throughout the year. We also agreed with the union that if the chief of police at any time felt that there was a necessity, if you can see the first line says the chief of police will be responsible, there is a budget process. So through the budget process, just like we do with public works, we can purchase more shirts, boots, whatever there was a need for during the year. So instead of increasing the 750, basically to allow the chief of police the ability through his budget, if he needed to spend some money to uh, supplement their union. I don't believe there's any more changes. Oh, not true. Um, Article 11, work week and overtime. This is a, this is a, a nice, this has to do with court time. The previous contract, the officers agreed that they, that, uh, they would only get four hours to appear in period court from the original eight hours. Now they've agreed that they should only be compensated when they show up to court. So if an officer shows up to court to testify, he will be given four hours. So, um, there may be another issue with court that we, we discussed. There's court security and things like that that is not addressed in the, in the contract. We're going to have to deal with that. But currently, they will only get paid when they show up, which makes sense. There were some officers that weren't showing up and were still getting four hours or it was happening. Um, oh, it, we made a big change here. I think this is, that's not in yours, but there used to be examples. You see, there was examples about. Off-duty employment. We got rid of that by way of example. Presently, Sergeant Christensen is handling things. We got rid of all these examples that were in the contract. So there's a lot of little tiny things to clean up. Um, Article 12, wages. Under Section 1, wages. What you're reading is uh, for officers permanently employed prior to January 1st, 2013. Base rate for to be increased is 1% for January of 2015. So on January 1, they'll get a 1%. As of uh, against 2014. Oh, excuse me. The base rate shall be increased to one percent as of January first, 2015. Two percent and two percent respectively. It's just to clarify that everyone's hope everyone understands this. Uh, not, not trying to be deceptive in any way. The previous contract expired July first. The percentage increase was three percent over eighteen months, which equated to. To 1%. In negotiations, this was a negotiated issue to give the 1% for the whole year. So it's kind of a little, a little bit extra during January to July, but then it, it's offset in the rest of the year. Um, there's a Senate, there's an attached schedule on here. I don't know if the schedule is attached. Um, so you guys look at the attached schedule. You can actually have them listed by individuals. Schedule A. You go, the last number page here is 32, mm -hmm. and it's the next page after that. So it taxes the schedule of wages, which is January 2015 all the way to 2018. You have senior sergeants, sergeants, senior patrolmen, and other patrolmen. The number that you're seeing in that first column represents the role of and just to make this clear, just to bump it obviously, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. This affects, like, we only have 11 officers right now, currently, that are affected by, in, in this way, affected by this contract. You know, the, the borough is very lean on police officers. We have an obligation to hire some, some more officers to make up for the few, couple that we've lost. We have another office officer that is, is given his notice to retire at the end of this, or leave at the end of this month. So we'll have another issue that we're going to have to deal with. Um, so the cost of this, just to make it clear, the cost of this is decreased because it's only affected a limited amount of officers. And most of these officers are senior officers that will retire at some, 
not too far in the future. We're not talking about 30 years. Um, it's not quicker than that. And then, so that's under Schedule A. We want to just go to Schedule B. Schedule B is, is for the officers that have been hired, that are currently hired, that were on a grid that we had, we had negotiated with the union previously where we defined the starting salary. Their, their ending salary hasn't changed, so step 10 hasn't changed. But what these officers have gained by this contract is they're getting this bump right now. So they're getting a bump for some of their time back, but they still cap out the same amount at the end of stage, stage 10. Um, and then Schedule C is new hire. New hirees, that's the, the previous negotiated grid system that we had for police officers. Uh, which is different than some other of the unions. Obviously, we, we define steps. Uh, there's, there's a logic to that. Um, and then the last schedule B, I'll go over that when we, when we get to that. Which one? That's the big one. What's that? That's the vacation. Schedule B? Uh, yeah, it's going to be as your issue. I just refer to where they refer to it and everybody else is maxed as well. Yep, so there you go. It clarifies exactly who has one. Yep. All right, and if you go back to Article 12, just to let everybody know, when we did this last four years ago, I had Joyce read the entire contract uh, verbatim. <laughs> word for word. Mark, were you here for that? Thanks. Yeah, you're not doing that. You were here for that. Yeah. Uh, so back to wages. We made clear the, the, the schedules. Uh, Article 13, there's no changes. Article 14, no changes. Article 15, there was a uh, grammatical change, not important. 16, no changes. 17, no changes. 18, no changes. 19, 20, 21, grammatical. 22, nothing. 23, nothing. Nothing. Five nothing. And 26, the only changes on 26 is obviously the, the signers are the um, Public Safety Committee, the Mayor, and, and the Bargain Unit. unit. What I have currently in my hand is, is a signed copy from the Union. So we've always asked our unions to sign before we approve anything. So they've signed, they've signed this agreement, and so we would just have to sign it. And obviously, council has to vote on this, even though there's only seven signers, and if the entire council wants to sign it, that's fine. There's no need. Actually, it's only the mayor's signature that counts. But the council does have to vote on this. The only thing I want to make clear is there is a schedule that's not in here. Is um, unused, uh, unused paid time off. Okay? Comp time does not expire. So if everyone knows what comp time is, that's time that they're not getting paid for, but they get to use it. There is a there's a schedule of paid time off that the officers were not able to use before the end of the year. Most of the officers, it, it could be argued that all the time was legitimate why they weren't able to pay. Uh, Russia, in the in the agreement process, um, the idea is that any time that was not used in this year, they would be allowed to use that time off. Yeah, yes, I'm sorry. By the end of the first quarter of 2015. And that could be a policy that the borough implements for all departments for everybody. And for some reason, you didn't use your time. Um, you would have to the first quarter. If there was a reason why you didn't. It's business free. Yeah, there's no. Business free. No. Why are we asking that? Yeah. Are there any questions?
under the major illness clause. <coughs> the, the, the paragraph seems to contradict itself a little bit. The union representatives think that it's maybe justified that there's a there's a sentence that kind of contradicts itself maybe after the meeting, even though we can prove this argument. You know, you know, First sentence. If you look at it, you'll say that it's contradictory. The guys looked at it too. I think we just do a sidebar thing. I think that when we looked at the changes of one major illness itself, that it, to try and rewrite the whole paragraph, it makes sense. So I think the paragraph we put it at the bottom and put the. the yeah, but what happens is the last sentence becomes. It's, it's fixable. Okay. Anybody else? Anybody else? Okay, no, no, you have to you. Uh, I'd like to make a motion to approve the. Uh, the police contract for uh, 2015 to 2018 of the uh, police union. I second that motion. I have a question before we do it. We get a motion seconded. Then we get a motion. Okay. You're okay. Is it been seconded? Yes. yes. So you're telling me now until 18, nothing can be changed? No. No. So it's well, you can do it consensually. Yeah. Right. I'm saying. This is the contract. This this is the contract. contract. But say, for example, there is an issue that comes up. Say there's some issue with the court. Say there's some issue with sidewalks. Say there's some issue with manpower. And we, for example, we need to change uh, some kind of salary or some kind of uh, a range. The union, we've done this already three times in Sidewalk Council. The first time we did it was we extended the contract for 18 months. The second time we did it was a starting salary for new hirees. And the third time we did it was to uh, have a scale for the employees that were hired. So there's nothing to stop us from ripping this up and starting all over again, or just adding amendments to it. This contract actually is done six months early. You know, this contract was not due until July of this year. The union felt it was important to fix this right now, and uh, it was a bad. I'm not going to say it was easy. Uh, it was good. It was difficult. It's easier than last. But it's done. They're still smiling in the back. At least until they get. So I think it's a pretty good one. So it's pretty good. Great. Resolution 14-186, 
14187 with a resolution awarding the contract to number one auto spa car wash for the washing and vacuuming of police cars for 2015. I so move. <coughs> Second that motion. I have a question. Uh, motion to approve the change of recommendation to approve the contract to
borrower ownership of Block 125, Lot 1. Want to explain that? Yeah. Um, Any motion first? Why don't you explain it first? Okay. Um, Since no one knows what this is. The next resolution is going to be for submitting an application for the hazardous discharge site remediation plan. Part of that application is you have to provide proof of ownership of the former public works garage at Third and Irish Hill. Through deed research, we couldn't find the deed that the borough owns this property. Um, but if you have a resolution stating that the borough acknowledges ownership, that's sufficient for the application. So this is just um, a resolution that states that the borough owns that property. And yeah, we've been collecting taxes on the borough garage. It's been there forever. So. And just to clarify, we are going to figure out where this deed is for the borough property. So that we decide to sell the borough property. Because part of the application says that we intend to redevelop that property, which means we possibly could sell it. So we need a deed, correct? One, I would prefer to the solicitor on that. It would be helpful. It would be helpful to sell. If anybody does have it, they can have it at this point, right? <laughs> How long, how long is it building to be? 100 years. So we could acquire it by adverse possession. Yeah. <clears throat> they didn't ask him, but. <laughs> so, um, and I'll make a motion to approve resolution 14191. I'll second. Roll call. Mrs. Scott. Yes. Mrs. Moore. Yes. Mrs. Passio. Yes. Mr. Root. Yes. Mr. Farrell. Yes. Mr. Pappas. Yes. That's us. I move this resolution is now adopted. Uh, resolution 14192 is a resolution for submission of an application to the Hazardous Discharge Site Remediation Fund. For the same property? Same thing. I make motion. I second that motion. Roll call. Mrs. Kelly. Yes. Mrs. Moore. Yes. Mrs. Pascoe. Yes. Mr. Root. Yes. Mr. Fowler. Yes. <coughs> Yes. Six hours. I know this resolution is now adopted. Uh, this begins the 20% issue with uh, Washington. Resolution 14193 is a resolution authorizing a written and mandatory contract for Lambert Construction LLC. I have a motion. Let's do a motion to second that discussion. I make a motion to approve. I'll second that motion. Discussion. Well, the discussion, yeah, just make it clear. You want to make it clear? Yeah, um, we already approved change order one for the Washington Avenue project to extend the limits. That was within the 20% threshold considered a minor change order that you can go ahead and do. Once we started the construction, we ran into some base repairs issues that we discussed last council meeting where we did some play. There was not enough time to go out to bid for that repair, so we just had Lambert fix the base repairs. Um, that change order put us over the 20% maximum you're allowed to do. And the next two change, uh, next two resolutions are just procedural that you have to do when you exceed the 20% change order. You want to make it clear how much we exceeded? Uh, it looks like $10,176. Uh, 15000 <coughs> It was the cost of the stone. We, we had over excavation to put in 12 inches of stone ballast, and then we put in six inches of a, a fire stone, and that um, was a, a net increase of $15,270. And that put us over, that was, the total change between the minor change order we did to change order one and this change order brought us to 23.9%. We were 3.9% over what we were allowed to do without having to go through this procedural. And it's just, Keeps, it just keeps uh, an open record of the chamber so you don't go around just having so <coughs> do work throughout the time. Just make sure that everything is open. If I just want to make it clear, it wasn't a huge amount of money. It was only ten or eleven thousand dollars. That's a lot of money, but it's it's not on a three hundred thousand dollar project. It was only three percent. Right. Uh, we couldn't fix the road if we had to it. Correct. So we had to fix it immediately because of the health, safety, and welfare. Of the road. <coughs> 
make sure that you get the emergency video through. Want to take a roll call then? Roll call. Mrs. Plaster. Yes. Ms. Kelly? Yes. Mr. Farrell? Yes. Mr. Root? Yes. Mrs. Moore? Yes. And Mr. Tapas? Yes. I move this resolution to be found adopted. Resolution 14-194 is a resolution approving the change order for the end construction. This is the actual change order. Can we make a motion? I second that motion. Roll call. Mrs. Passio? Yes. Mrs. Kelly? Yes. Mr. Farrell? Yes. Mr. Roof? Yes. Mrs. Moore? Yes. And Mr. Tapas? Yes. I sign this resolution as an end of Resolution 14-195 is a resolution authorizing the submission of a request for funding for year 36 supplemental uh, CDBG funds. Have a motion? I make a motion. I second that motion. Roll call. Mrs. Kelly? Yes. Mrs. Pascal? Yes. Mrs. <coughs> Mr. Farrell? Yes. Mr. Root? Yes. And Mr. Pines? Yes. Six dollars. Now we have the one that I handed you, the 14196 which is a resolution that cancels taxes because ownership went into the hands of a, uh, a New Jersey nonprofit. Yeah, Brian gave me this at, uh, today. Where's the owner? It's uh, Block 57, Lot 8. Let me see if I have the address. Is it a commercial property? No. No, he just told me tonight he was saying he told me that this is becoming more and more um, New Jersey has even mortgage company owns it. Let me see if you gave me the address again. Um, what is the purpose of this nonprofit? No, it's not, it's not a nonprofit there. The, a nonprofit owns it. New Jersey has a mortgage. They, hopefully they'll sell it. I mean, be, the taxes. They just took it over for some reason. But well, they're a nonprofit, so that's why you're not paying <coughs> the taxes. Yes, they're a nonprofit. No. I, I make a motion to approve. Second that motion. Yes. Roll call. Mrs. Kelly? Yes. Mrs. Pascoe? Yes. Mr. Root? Yes. Mrs. Moore? Yes. Mr. Farrell? Yes. And Mr. Papas? Yes. That's six signs. Okay, now wait a minute. Now Rich just said he's going to have a resolution. We have a resolution to authorize the treasurer to make transfers. Uh, in the 2014 budget, we, I just passed that as a round from Rich. Mark, you gotta go. Good motion. Good motion. That's 198, Joyce. Yeah, it would be 198. Okay. This is what we came in. I make a motion to approve the transfers. I, I second that motion. Well, Mrs. Kelly? Yes. Mrs. Passio? Yes. Mrs. Moore? Yes. Mr. Farrell? Yes. Mr. Root? Yes. And Mr. Tapas? Yes. So now we have a resolution to cancel uh, are these checks for it or are they This is uh, this one is by federal ruling. It was something that was a recommendation by the auditor. Uh, unfortunately, with the contract, we didn't have a <coughs> chance to find the resolution online for the template. Uh, this is accounts payables that are uh, basically the years are based on the POID, so most of them are from 2010. Um, the year is closed. There's no bills outstanding, so there's nothing else can be done with these. It's just tied up in the books. So by canceling uh, these accounts payables, it will send for 2500 back to surplus. So this was showing that we owed it, but we did. Well, it's basically a purchase order reserve. So once your year closes, you move to the, the open POs goes to accounts payable. Um, if the bill never comes through, then uh, it, it can be canceled. Okay. Uh, for instance, one of them that's still out there was for the, the work that was done that was tied up with the surety that check was being cut. So that one <coughs> the question why we're still outstanding. Well, there was there was a reason. So basically, there's just pulls some money out there. I make a motion to approve. I'll second that motion. Roll call. Mrs. Passio? Yes. Mrs. Moore? Yes. Mr. Root? Yes. Mr. Farrell? Yes. Mr. Root? 
Ocasio? Yes. Mrs. Kelly? Yes. Mrs. Moore? Yes. Mr. Farrell? Yes. Mr. Root? Yes. And Mr. Yes. yes. Six odds. Were they the uh, only two that you have heard? That's Washington Avenue, right? Correct. I make a motion to approve. Second that motion. Roll call. You know, I mean, you don't need a roll call just to sign. You've already oh, to sign? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay. Yeah. I make a motion to approve. Okay. I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, I do have two other ones that were brought up and we, we need to, uh, I don't know if we want to do this and look, uh, if we should do a close. It's, it's, it is in reference to a couple of employees. But yes. And then come back. Yes? Well, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Then I. I make a motion to go into a closed session to uh, for 20 minutes. We will come back out and, and do business though. Um, so we'll be back about 10 after. So. 14, 200? Yeah. Uh, it's a closed session just to talk about uh, two employees. Two personnel. Two personnel. For how long? 20 minutes. I think everybody should talk about it before I just bring it up. I need the motion. I need the motion. I need the Uh -huh. Those opposed? Yeah, I 